going to the Phantom Zone. In this week's episode, first is forever. Everyone is kidnapped. The Luthers by the Teagues and Chloe's put into a high school of wax. Then in the season four finale, commencement. The meteors hit the town, Lana's wanted for murder, Lois leaves to find her sister, and Clark must find the remaining Infinity Stones. I mean Dragon Balls. Oops, Caps, Emeralds. Oh, I guess it's actually Kryptonian Crystals. This is the Smallville Chronicles. Hello again, and thank you for joining us for the season four finale. Joining me as always is Alan Muir. I, I, I'm just amazed how we, we're near the halfway point. We've only gone for like two years. Not even two years. No, not even like a year. No, like not even a year. I don't even think we've gone like a full year. No, like about a full year with this, specifically with Smallville, I think. So, yeah, we're ripping through it. Um, I think it's easier in these earlier seasons because they're much more um freak of the week it'll be a big thing going into what we talk about season five the difference yeah so we get our penultimate episode the a story is kind of the big throwaway thing while the big story is what the b story is what's kind of connecting the rest of everything i guess the only part of the a story that's like important is kind of the idea of these characters are leaving high school and becoming adults and what that means for the show and them so Otherwise, it's kind of goofy. Uh, it is almost a. Dir- I feel like it's like a direct play on House of Wax, which I wonder if it came out around came out around the same time, which was like oh, a horror, so, so, the one, horror movie with Paris Hilton. I was just about to say that. Yeah, let me see, because that was a remake. Oh yeah, it was the same year. So oh five. And, and yeah. this is much better than that movie. Um, they came out almost. Wow, this is this came out on May eleventh. And the movie came out, I just saw it, where did did it go? Also in 05, did it come out in May? May 6th. So House of Wax came out a week before this episode aired, not even five days. So I guess people were all kind of on the same thing. But the the basic idea, or as we go through, this episode's pretty cut and dry for the most part. So the simple message of the episode is people, some people don't want to let go. mm -hmm. So Chloe's going preparing the last issue for the year of the torch um she's signing um the yearbook for a classmate brendan nash and then she's like super confused because she like leaves and then there's like nobody in the hallway and the entire school is empty and then she goes to her locker and she finds a girl kind of like it looks like a statue at first until she looks closely and the eyeball starts to move which is a really creepy effect um so then she sees like oh this person's trapped in there and then she's like Wait, all the doors are locked, my phone is dead, and the windows aren't real, they're just, like, lights. And then it kind of pulls out, and we realize that she's not in the school, she's in an abandoned factory. And so from this, we cut to, like, kind of the, I guess, the C story, which is, you know, the Kents and Clark, um, they're kind of having a disagreement that Clark is going to go to, was it, the, basically, what is the community college in this universe? Going yeah, to which, which it sends, it sends a good message, like, hey... Superman didn't go to, he didn't go to a big name college. Yeah. Because basically he says, like, so that he can, he can live at home and then commute to school and still help on the farm because he's worried that after his dad's heart attack that he can't really leave them, like, he'd be uncomfortable. Yeah, which was present, or a little, a little glimpse was present in the uh, last two episodes we, we did. Yes. Specifically, uh, Blank. Mm-hmm. So yeah, cl- uh, then we cut back to this kind of our like horror show, horror movie thing. So Chloe's trying to find an internet connection, and she finds two other students. They're like, you know, play play along, or else you're gonna like end up like what like the other girl frozen. And then she sees Brendan again, who's like, you know, he I don't want high school to end. This is the best time of our lives. He wants to go and do this stuff and become like adults. And she's like, how is he able to keep us here? And then she sees him, like, turn one of the other students into, like, the wax. Um, and then we cut to the regular high, like, the real high school. And Clark and Lana are talking about graduation, their plans. And Clark says he's going to go to Central Kansas. And Lana's happy because she's going to stay in Smallville as well. And then they're like, huh, Chloe never finished. Um, Chloe and a number and, like, a bunch of other. Yeah, a bunch of randoms haven't picked up their graduation uniform. And then they're kind of like, that's really weird. And then we cut to the kind of important overall 
plot for the season. So Lex is going to excavate the cave. Um, Jason shows up and dark guns him. And then basically they like they grab him because they want to use him in order to get the stone they think Lionel has. It's, it's, just the, it's, it's a double interrogation. Yes. And it's the stone that was they got from China or whatever they were. Um, the air stone? I don't remember. The yeah. pointy one. So we go back to Jonathan is like talking to Clark and he's like, you don't need to stay around here. We can do this ourselves. And Clark's like, um, no, you can't. And Martha even says like kind of to Jonathan, like, no, we really can't. Like he does the job of like 10 people. So Clark and Lana notice that Chloe was like, is still not around. I think this is when they see that like the paper isn't finished. And that's when they like get really booted up. Yeah. And then Lex wakes up and he is tied to a chair and looks next to him and Lionel's there. And then this is where the <laughs> the torturing begins of the two of them. But and this I, was the uh, bit from the, the preview from last week. Yes. And it does play into some interesting areas because Lex is basically throughout when we keep cutting back is like, are you guys dumb? He doesn't give a shit about me. Like, you're using the wrong person here. Well, we pop back to Clark, who's like, checks in with Lois. And they're like, yeah, we still have not seen... Um, anybody, but or like checks in with Lois and like haven't seen anybody. But like the last thing Lois saw was that she was Chloe was talking to this dude Brendan. So they go and basically at the high school, Lana shows that she has the one of the crystal things, and Brendan goes and kidnaps her, turning her into the wax figure. And takes her at at the point where uh, the sort of in between points during the interrogation, they're about to sp- take a a hot beer and basically pull a death stroke on it to Lux and just take out one of his eyes. Lionel reveals he gave it he gave the stone the stone to the chosen to the, the person who he believes to be the chosen one, which is Lana. Yes. Which is I, I would say is like a big thing is this is what he tells them. Yeah. Yes. So Clark um basically Lana gets kidnapped by the guy. She's revealed to have the stone. Um and the guy, Brendan, brings her to the fake school and unpetrifies her. And Chloe's like, uh, yeah, here's the thing. And here's our plan. And then we cut back to Jason Genevieve torturing, like, yeah, again, like you were saying with the hot poker and reveals the chosen one. And then Lionel's like, but, you know, you should know, like, you should not underestimate her. Isabel's still there. And Isabel swore that she would destroy your family line. And then we cut to Clark and Lois are checking out Brendan's dark room, And they see that he has, like some schematics or stuff for the fake high school. Like a little diorama? Yeah. So one of the... So we cut back to the fake high school, and one of the students go says that, like, Brendan always had a crush on Chloe, and that she could play along uh, just long enough for Lana to knock him out. And they grab the keys and head for the door, um, but when they try to leave for the, the factory, Brendan grabs the girl, and then... First he uh, like, her, and then just... Rips her goddamn head off. Like, it is very violent for the show what he does. Like, he, like, kills the shit out of her, even though it's basically a prop. And then it really, he, like, th- the body, like, falls down and, like, shatters. Yeah, that just, it's just good. Yeah. Classic small of goviness. Into, like, tiny little chunks. So she's dead, and we don't get her name. So we cut back to the other torture scene. So Lionel's trying to work Jason and Genevieve against each other, being like, why do you think she sent her? sent you to go deal with Lana and all this stuff and like do you really care about her blah blah and Jason's like I don't know if I should shoot you or if I'm going to like shoot Genevieve and then he just kind of storms off to go rescue Lana I guess it's the problem with the, the Jason's character is like I really don't think they ever do a good job of explaining how much he knows of everything because sometimes it seems like he knows everything like that they killed what's her name to get the one stone right yeah, and then the best part of the episode is coming up. So, um, Jason storms off. Jason confronts Lex with Clark and being involved in all this mysterious stuff. But Lionel sh- gets out and ends up <laughs> shooting Jason. And then he <laughs> falls into the water. So like, gets, off a cliff. Yeah, he falls off a cliff and, like, is swept away. And Lex is like, uh, yeah, I still don't trust you. And if anything happens to Lana, he'll pay. But to, before we get to the end of this, 
to me, I think like Lionel was bullshitting everybody. At least that's how I took it because he's just like, yeah, yeah, it's totally Lana, and I gave her the thing. Because I always thought like Lana, it never left her hands. Jason gave it to her, and she just hid it. And then I always thought it was Lex that ransacked the place and didn't find it. So, but they never really explain it, like the real, I guess, timeline of everything. But I never thought that Lionel ever believes or ever actually gave lot of the thing he just assumes that she has it because nobody else does so we cut back to the fake high school clark and lois get there clark said lois off while he like kind of to like find an entrance and clark just kind of like blows his way through he sees petrified chloe while lois finds her own way in and she's petrified by brendan and he grabs a bat to go like crack her with it but clark blocks it and tries to talk him into like figure, like you know facing everything but he grabs Clark to petrify him, but it reverses on him for some reason. Because plot? Yeah, because Kryptonians. And he turns into wax and falls and shatters. And then everybody goes back to normal. Except for the person who, who except for the well, one who got decapitated. Um, I'm assuming that she turned back to normal and then there's just a pile of mushy meat on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So we cut back to the barn and Jonathan is like, all right. You're right, but I still don't want, like, what your stuff that we need you to do here to take away from that. Like, you still need to go and do college for yourself and don't worry about the farm. And basically, he's like, I stayed here and took care of the farm, and I don't want that for you. And Clark basically tells him, he's like, I'm not, like, I'm doing it because I love you, not because I have to. And I'll still be able to, like, go and do college and stuff. And then we cut to on the last day of school, Chloe taking down her wall of weird, closes up the torch. And her, Lana, and Clark, like, kind of do their walk away from the high school, knowing that Lana and Clark are staying in Smallville and Chloe is going off to Met You. And that is how Forever closes. So it's a pretty short episode. The only things that are, like, kind of interesting are the conversations between Clark and Jonathan and then what happens with Lionel, Lex, and the Teeks. Can we talk about the who's, who, the who, like, who's going to be... Because I'm just fascinated by this. Oh, the like the people who got kidnapped. So it was like, um, I guess a nerd guy named Wendell, who was most likely to win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Chloe Sullivan, most likely to succeed, which she may have, but in a, not in the not in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, Clark Kent was most most likely to be drafted into the, the NFL. Didn't happen. Lana Lang was most likely to be a cover girl. Haley. Timmons was most likely to be a Sharks cheerleader. Until she got her head ripped off. Yeah. Lisa Mason was most likely to be a movie star. Brennan Nash was most likely to be the next Peter Parker. <laughs> until he lost his form. Oh, I did not realize this, but it's very obvious. Like, he... The only guys he takes are Wendell, and then he never even goes after Clark. Or he never gets the chance to. And then it's all women. Which, again, makes him much like House of Wax. And Delia Watkins was most likely to be a rock star. And this, I, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because it reminds me of when, I, like, my final year in high school, what it said, like, my most likely to. And it was most likely to become a comic book artist. And I'm just like, that's that hurts. Like, a year, right after high school, I lost my, I basically lost my, my ability to draw. But yeah, this yeah. was, this was a good episode. Yeah, it's not the best. It's a good, like, freak of the week kind of episode. Um, but yeah, I would say I'd give it, like, a B. B, B minus. But it does, it is our last appearance for for basically, except when we return to it in, like, the 200th episode of the, the Torch. So that is no longer our mainstay of where the team kind of meets up to gather info. I believe, I don't know if it's in Season 5 that it turns into the Daily Planet or not. That might be Season 6. The actor who played, apparently the actor who played uh, Wendell was Alison Mack's boyfriend at the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but um, I don't know, is there much else to talk about this episode? I kind of want to just jump into this finale because so much goddamn stuff happens. Yeah. All right. So to jump into the finale, so this is the 22nd episode of season four, 88 episode? overall. Yeah, lucky 88. Uh, commencement. So, this is a longer episode than pretty much all the ones com coming up to this. I think it was like a little over an hour. Yeah, it was. It was set. It was like teased as like ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. So, like, like without commercials, like, it's probably like 
Mm. But then again, with commercials and the 10 minutes of Batman Begins footage, which yeah. I just I just love that. Yeah, it's probably more like uh, an hour 10 at best. Uh, yeah. So we start off with kind of like this episode is kind of just like rolling from the jump. So yeah, it's basically just that. And how many loose ends of the season can we wrap up and within the time that we've been allotted? Yep. So Lana goes back to her apartment and she finds Genevieve there, who's basically like, Lionel told me he gave you the thing. And she's like, I didn't give it to me now or I'll kill you and I'll find it myself. And then Lana pulls it out of her purse and is like, here, I have it. And basically then Lana, like, <laughs> like, I don't even know, like some sort of karate kicks her like crazy style that she learned. And they start fighting and wrestling. And then uh, Genevieve starts choking Lana out. And then Isabel takes over who turns the tables and literally they just roll over and then like force pulls the crystal, the air crystal to herself and stabs Genevieve with it. like, right. I guess in the heart. Yeah. She bleeds out pretty quickly. Um, then the tattoo, on uh, the, you know, the tramp stamp of power on Lana disappears <laughs> and yeah, she yeah. returns to herself and she's like, what the, sh she's just like covered yeah. in blood and she's like, Oh my God. And she kind of like, scurries into a corner freaking out and then turns her head and Lex is just there. So I guess the implication is that following directly from the last episode, after Lionel and Lex escape, he runs right to the Talon. Genevieve gets to the Talon, what, a couple minutes before him, which is, or maybe like she's just been sitting there waiting for Lana. And then Lana gets there after being kidnapped or not after being kidnapped, after doing that weird walk home from school. Um, and yeah, so Lex gets it like, well, like, turns in, uh, shows up, and then it cuts to this weird sequence of Clark and... Uh, this weird LSD dream. Yeah, and the dog is in it. For some oh, reason. Shelby. Shelby, and then they go outside and there's a bright light, and then we see it gets red, yellow, and green kind of lights that look like kind of Aurora Borealis, but then they turn to the symbols. And then Clark wakes up and the Kents are like, yeah, you're yelling in your sleep, it's coming. And then we go to terrible CGI of space where a giant meteor. Basically just, just an updated version of the uh, pilot. Yes. So then we cut back to the town apartment and Lex. Oh, no, we cut to the um, the mansion and Lex is creepily helping Lana wash her hands in a bowl in the middle of his room with a pitcher. So she didn't wash her hands and clean up at her apartment. He took her to the mansion and isn't in the bathroom, but like in the middle of the mansion, cleaning her hands. Yeah, it's <laughs> a pretty weird scene. But he's basically like, yeah, it's self-defense, but Genevieve's husband is like one of the greatest defense attorneys in the nation. And he's, which he will come back, I think in season he seven comes back or eight. In, he comes back in season seven and he's, and it's not even, not even a scene with Lana, Lex. No, it's with Clark. Yeah, it's a, with Clark. And it's, and it's what's his name from... Is it, it's, it's Robert, Robert Picardo. Yeah, he was in... Was he in Deep Space? He was on Voyager. Voyager? Okay, because he was like the VR doctor, right? He was a holographic do holographic doctor. Mm -hmm. So... And he turns out to be... he He's like the last remaining member of, of uh, the, the Veritas group. Yes. And he's just like... It's their, it's their like final wrap-up of the storyline, I guess? Well, sort of, because Tess ends up reading the, fr some stuff from it in Season 8 and 9. Uh, all right. So, well, we are far away from there. Um, but all I'll say is that it's one of, it's basically the, it's one of those person is in the, in the foreground, and they have a hood on, you can barely see who make out who it is, and then it's one of those dramatic, like, reveals. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's saying, like, I, I never thought I'd survive to... to to, to meet this, the uh, Traveler and treating Clark like a god. It's some weird stuff. Mm -hmm. So to get back to this, Lex basically tells Lana, don't, like, you can, I'll give all my lawyers to you, we'll figure it out, just don't leave the mansion and don't talk to anybody, and he leaves. Lana reveals that she still has the crystal, or stone or whatever. Lionel goes to the apartment, and he um, takes care of Genevieve's body, and he tells Lex that if he does not get the stone from Lana by noon that he'll turn everything over to the sheriff. Uh, Clark and Chloe noticed that Lana doesn't pick up her cap and gown, but I thought in the last episode... They were... It was the other way around? Yeah. So Lana didn't pick it up then? Well, she got... I think it's just like a plot device that they like yeah. to... Yeah. 
to just kind of say like, oh, and they're like, oh, maybe she's like, they're worried that she's not going to make it to the ceremony. So uh, Clark gets his, so they're doing the, like the graduation and Clark gets his diploma and then military vehicles show up and they're like, everybody, you got to get out. There's another meteor shower going to hit in three hours. Oh my God, leave. And everyone freaks out and runs away. Clark tells Chloe and Lois to get the hell out of Smallville. Lex shows up and tells Clark and his parents that I'll get you safe passage out on the LexCorp jet. And Clark's like, no, I have to, I can't remember where, but he gives like some excuse, but he's like, no, I can't. Uh, instead, he goes to the caves and he talks to Jorel, and Jorel's like, this is all your fault because you didn't collect the Stones of Power in time, and, and then, today you're going to witness the consequences. Yeah, for denying, for basically, basically the consequences for not doing what Robot you would should have done. Mm-hmm. And he tells and, them, yeah, like there's nothing, nothing they there, there can be nothing that can be done to prevent it from yeah. like, what's happening. And it was ironically Lana who caused a <laughs> yeah. approach causes basically because like human blood is on one of the stones, it's what causes this, which is kind of vague because it's not like the meteor is propelled by anything, it just seems, I don't know, seems goofy, but that there's a dark force from Krypton that's about to come to Earth which we will find out in Season 5. If he does not unite the stones at once, Earth will be destroyed, and not even Clark will survive, and the fate of the world is in his hands. So Clark goes back to the farm. His parents are loading... God damn you, Siri. <laughs> um, uh, they're loading up the car, and he's like, I had to find all the stones, and they're like, the last radio shower is the kryptonite, like, so this one could be two. And it could kill Clark. Mm -hmm. And he's basically like, I'm the only person that could save the Earth. And Jonathan's like, all right, well, all your trials prepared for this way. Go make us proud, son. So Clark finds Lana waiting for him in the bar because she doesn't barn because she didn't listen to Lex. And she's like, I don't know why, but I know if I give this to you, it's going to be in the right hands. And I feel like it was meant for you. So I was like, which is kind of like, again, plot hand wavy, but OK. Um, they both go, I love you to each other. And they kiss. And just in case they don't see each other again, she goes back to Luther Mansion. Uh and leaves Chloe a voicemail before Lex takes her phone away, saying that she agreed not to contact anyone. And when Lex asks Lana for the stone, she's like, I don't have it, but it's in a safe place. And then we have <laughs> one of the most ridiculous scenes. Basically, Jason just comes back from the dead. We come back from being killed twice to show up at the Clark at Clark's house and is like, where is the stuff? And I have a shotgun and give me the things. He basically shows up as Dean Winchester. Yeah. Like, so, totally, totally not Jason, just straight up Dean. Yeah, he's, like, totally, like, wrecked. He's shot, like, it, he should be dead from the gunshot or the fall, but he's not from either. He's just, like, got the shit kicked out of him, and he's bleeding. So we cut to Lois and Chloe are stuck in traffic, and Lois distracts a guard long enough so they Chloe can sneak behind and get to the Luther mansion and look for Lana. Lex goes to the mansion where Lionel's waiting, and they argue about the whereabouts of the crystal. Uh, Clark puts the second stone in the altar, and then he hears the sound that we always hear when stuff happens. And it's revealed that the yeah, last stone... It's a good effect where you see just a, a blinding light from Lionel's pocket. Mm -hmm. And this has massive ramifications going on till the end of the series, basically. So and this is the stone that Lionel had in jail, which was given to Bridget Crosby, who Jason killed... So the Teak should have had this? Yeah. So we don't really know how this got back to Lionel, but it is. So it emits thing uh, like stuff. Lex is thrown, getting some CTE, and then Lionel is catatonic. And he missed, he missed in a coma for, the, for a bunch of season five. Yes. Um, Lex is <laughs> like, tells his manservant, you deal with this. Uh, basically saying, you know, I've the son that my father always wanted me to be, and he puts the stone in the vault. Clark goes to the mansion because he can, can hear I just, it. Can I just say how I, I forgot how I just realized how this whole again ties back to the finale mm -hmm. of like the entire like small bowl as a whole. The series, yeah. There the uh the the the, the teaser for it, you there's a line it's like for each letter in the small bowl word or in the name, there's like a line that's a be well, like a line that said for each letter. For the sec for the first or second for for the third or fourth L, it's Lionel saying, "Time to become the Luther you're meant to be." Meant to be, mm -hmm. and it's just something I never I, f I completely forgot about. 
because it's been nearly a decade since I watched or since I watched the finale. Yeah, like there's well, <clears throat> Smallville in general was always really good at doing callbacks um, to like everything, like from the season one with the Lex in the white suit and stuff. So even Clark, I mean, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna like Summer Holt makes it <laughs> from season yes. season like one or two to all the way to season ten, all the way to the finale. So. To get back, Clark goes to speed, Super Speed's the mansion. He rips open the vault, but there's tons of kryptonite in there. And he's able to grab the stone right before he collapses. Lana gets onto the helicopter and Lex is like, you gotta give me the stone. And she's like, I don't have it. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. and she's like, oh, you don't care about me. You just care about the stone. And Lex goes back to the mansion. Chloe finds Clark unconscious and gets him out of there. Lex walks in to find Chloe, but Clark speeds away before Lex can see him. And Lex demands like, oh, why is she here? And like, do you know what's happening? And basically grabs her. I feel like he doesn't he grab her by the arm and like drags her to the Quachi caves. Like basically, like what the hell is going on? Yeah. So <laughs> we cut back. Jason's yeah. tying up Jonathan and Martha, and they try to fight back. Um, but after the scuffle, he regains control. And then we're coming <laughs> up on the best part of of the yeah. scene so or me- of the whole that whole storyline, the whole little, yeah. little, that minor plot. So the meteors are hit, starting to hit Smallville. Lois is stuck in traffic and can't out, can't get out before the meteors hit. She gets out of Chloe's car to get to higher ground. Um, she looks over the ridge, and this is when she we get like the shot of the second meteor shower just starting to lay waste to Smallville. And, and then, then <laughs> and then they kind of ask Jason. We hear something. You hear something coming, but like something that's going to hit. Jason lo- is lo- he looks up like God damn it. And it's just the last we see of him. It's just yeah, he gets right. He gets killed by a meteor. A literal Deus Ex Machina saves the Kents. <laughs> yeah. um, Got it on the show. Yeah, and so basically, this is the beginning of like cutting to each character. So we got to Lionel, who's in a catatonic state. Um, I don't know. Is this where we see his eyes are running like crypto- Kryptonian stuff in them? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lana's helicopter is hit by a meteor and it crashes and she gets up all limpy around and she crawls in to look at the crater and there is a giant black crystal shape like the Kryptonian crystal, but obviously a spaceship of some sort. Lex and Chloe go to see, they see light coming out of the Kawachi cave. Chloe pushes him against the cave wall, giving him a second concussion of the episode. She runs away. He's knocked out. Uh, she gets knocked out though. Or no, she... Doesn't she, knock him out, but he's like kind of disoriented and she's able to get away. Kind of. Clark combines the stones. They turn into a blue kind of crystal in the shape of like the crest thing on his chest when he's in Superman costume. It floats up. It turns into the crystal of knowledge. Clark grabs it and he's <laughs> he instant transmissions to the Antarctic. I don't know if they say Antarctic or Arctic. I don't know. He gets trans to one of the poles and. I don't understand why he does this, unless it's like they never explain his reasons. Baylor just why looks he like just throws it. He's like grabs it and he's like looks around and he's just like fuck this thing and just chucks it. And then that's how season four ends. But like they never explain like if he has like a inkling that that's what he's supposed to do. But it legitimately just looks like that he just like whips the thing into the crowd, like into the snow. Um... So there's a, like, kind of like small things that are awesome in this episode. We got one of the things from the, the that'll be in the trailer from now on, which is Clark when he's on the bridge. There's like a little kid about to be hit by like an explosion or something, and he protects the kid. And he does a nice little hug. Mm-hmm. And basically, like all this stuff kind of gets. Oh, uh, so, um, just a little teaser for those for those who don't remember. A certain character also accidentally gets gets sent to the Arctic. Oh yes. That's we see that in the season five opening. Um, so this is also the last episode where Lois Lane is a special guest. After this, she becomes a regular. This is Lionel's fiftieth episode. The last um, season where we have Jonathan as a main. Yeah, Jonathan as a regular on the show. We never see or hear about. We uh, now we hear about the Teagues again, like we said, but like not really much. Mainly, it's. The three or the four families that get, or the four names that get mentioned the most: the Luthers, the Queens, the Teagues, and the Swan. Yeah, the Swan. Mm-hmm. So it's like it is a great finale. It is a total um, cliffhanger episode. 
because we don't know what happens to Lex and Chloe, what's going on with Clark and the thing. Lana sees a goddamn spaceship. Um, yeah, the um, and also also one of the biggest. It's it's one of the uh, it's one of the it's it's not it's sort of like a minor thing when from now after from now on instead of being the like kind of goldish yellowish smallville it's now going to be just a really bright red which i just i preferred that and it was like that that was a moment when when i knew that everything was everything was like going to be amped up yeah because this is kind this is really the end of a lot of the softness in smallville like for the rest of the series not that it gets darker, but it's definitely much more serious, and there's much greater how do I put this um, consequences to everything, and that starts really heavily in the next season. So, as a season finale, I think this is one of the better season finales. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of the better episodes, but specifically a season finale. I think season three season finale was a little bit okay. I think I see. I, I just I, I see why. It ends the way it does. They were trying to uh, do an homage to the super, the Don the, the Richard Donner Superman, as it's very like very similar to how the the version or the the way the, the fortress is started in the movie. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Like when he chucks it. Okay, so um, I don't know. Is there anything else? I do think I like the season three finale better as a finale. But this season finale, I feel like what you said before, it's like, oh, we need to tie up all these loose ends, especially for this really shitty, like, storyline that nobody likes and, like, move on to, like, other stuff. Because mostly what this does is it opens us up, opens it up for us in season five to get, like, heavily into the Kryptonian stuff. Like, season five is when this entire, like, we are we move well past Smallville and into, like, the larger world of um, this universe. So, did you have anything else you want to add about this episode, or should we take a look at what we'll be seeing in season five? This um, mainly just that a lot of the stuff during this season gets brought up in a, in uh, I want to say the episode is Descent. I think I've sent I've sent you the link before. Mm -hmm. the scene where it's Clark versus Lex, like it's right after a certain character dies, and Clark and Lex are having a back and forth where. They're talking about their fathers, and it just goes into it evolves into like a thing like meteor rocks, cryptic symbols, freaks. These threats are real. Like just Lex losing it, and this is the start of it. Mm -hmm. No, this is definitely like I think when we see his reaction to Lana on the helicopter is when we kind of see the kind of end of like the facade of Lex. Like he's not even trying at that point. So. um Season five to kind of take a look at it quickly. We get our first two members of the Justice League in this season, with Aquaman showing up in the fourth ep the fourth episode, and Cyborg showing up like towards the end of the season. We have a bunch of other like amazing. So the first episode is straight up like directly takes place right after this. We get hints to Superman's. I would say his greatest foe, maybe like probably. You would say like his at least his most famous villain, right? Besides Lex, yeah. So that which will continuously be around. Obviously, we said like Lois becomes like a mainstay. We kind of drop the meteor freak thing because we have it's a much more overarching season. Um, we get introduced to a not quite Batman character that kind of inspires Clark in many ways. Some backstory into Chloe. The um, I'm trying to like not I like guess. There's like another major Superman villain that is throughout this entire season. Um, I'm trying to remember what episode. Oh, yes. We also get the episode 100, which is huge um, in this year, which will be like everything changes going past that episode. Where basically Clark gets to change destiny so many times. It's yes, it's almost comical. And we kind of end the last couple of episodes are kind of like huge again overall things and this is also the season where the friendship between Clark and Lex is basically disintegrated completely i think they kind of i don't remember if like it kind of comes back around in 6 a little bit um but i mean, i thought that like 5 is kind of where it's like donezo yeah 
season five is basically where that relationship is for the most part completely ended they don't become they become they're not enemies enemies but they're like not even on terms anymore and seven is when lex like goes full evil and i is that the last season he's in uh what sorry just, season? i was just checking something where apparently it's what every the the whole jason like plot line in this and the, the, the episode never goes anywhere like they they, they, they they never tell clark about it oh yeah so like season seven is the last season of lex so yeah yeah f- five is when they're kind of broken up and they're not where they're like frenemies six they're enemies six five they're like frenemies six they're not even like communicating to the point they're just and seven they're straight up like out for, like they're enemies i guess six they're adversaries and then seven they're enemy and then yeah the best the best way to say it is just the, the like the perfect the one episode that sums it up perfectly is laxmas yes laxmas is possibly one of the best episodes of the series and that's in season five is that like the 10th episode in season five yes ironically despite being like like going on to uh, be like cw they never they never uh that's uh, actually episode episode nine of season five. Yeah, season five is also the last episode or the last season where they're on the WB before it turns into the CW. Which is funny that is like perfectly halfway into the series. Yeah, so, and uh, Lexmas is basically it's a what if kind of a thing. Yeah, where like it's sort of instead of the ghost of Christmas past, it's the ghost of someone very much who he very much he who he loves very much, and it's it's. Another take on it's a wonderful life. Yeah, yeah, that's it's 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 basically a, it's a wonderful life with Lex, but kind of the flip. Like instead of a world without him, kind of like a world without the darkness in him. So it yeah, would also, definitely be. And we get to see like we get to see things like Clark. Uh, um, what's the word? Interacting with a drunk Santa. Oh yes, there's also like a ton of other like interesting things like. Again, we get like backstory to Chloe's life, um, which really culminates, I think, in season six. And then we get the weirdness of when when he kind of rejoins the show. Good line on question mark. <laughs> like, yeah, we never really know. This is like the point where you're like, you never really know where Lionel lies and everything. And like, if you think this, if you think the commencement episode is batshit crazy. Just wait till season. Well, we, we, we just wait till we talk about the uh, end of season five because it's basically martial law. Just everyone going, ca- just pure unadulterated undul- chaos. I'm sorry, I like totally got lost in my thoughts right now. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of wraps us up. We have not specifically decided what we're going to do for our special. I think we're going to watch the first or pilot episode of krypton since that just got canceled <laughs> I, I, lo- I love that uh sci-fi helps us out with things like this mm-hmm. and just being a, just a garbage company Network. yeah um so yeah i guess kind of for plugs check out all the other shows um after darks legion talk um and now comics we also have uh, legion of tunes as part of los haro Along with a bunch of other podcasts, including Los Horror Games, which Alan is on. Yeah, we uh, we recorded uh, the day prior to this, and we talked about all the craziness that went up, like, what that happened during Gamescom, where Sony bought Insomniac, and we talked about a bunch of other games. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, that that Insomniac news is pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I would say check out all that stuff, and then. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to everything, and make sure you tell a friend. All right, and that does it for us and for this season of the Smallville Chronicles. As always, I am Luke Gonzalez. I'm Alan Muir, and the Phantom Zone Cinematic Universe backbone is built on truth, justice, and the American way.